Well, greetings, loved ones, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. This is the CJC Power Hour with your neighborhood pastor, Bishop Double O. Anthony Johnson, coming to you here from the Church of Jesus Christ in Mississauga, Ontario. We have something special for you this evening, and we know that the power and the anointing of God will be flowing without measure in this evening's broadcast. We want you to stay tuned. Our key uh, scripture today is Joshua chapter 7, verses 1 through this, uh, 26. But our key verse is verse number 10 to 13. And praise God, the word to you today is a call to action. A call to action. For those of you who are on Facebook Live, I want you to like and share this video. Send it to as many as you can. And after this, it will be up within the next 24 hours on new YouTube so that, praise God, we can, we can extend it to a wider audience. But we want to speak to you today, and we're coming to you with a word from the Lord. It's a call to action. Let me take you to the scripture here on our, our live broadcast today, Joshua chapter 7, and praise God, verses 10 to 13, which is our key verses today. And let me read this in your hearing as you stay in the presence of the Lord. And I want you to really keep me in your prayers because this is the voice of the end time. God wants to speak to his people. And this is the voice of the end time. And God is sending a profound and a prolific message out to the church and the world at large. So let's go to the reading of the scripture again. Praise God. As I said, the key verses I'm just going to look at today, I wanted to read the entire passage of, of, of Joshua chapter 7, but I want to focus more intensely on verses 10 to 30. As I read in your hearing, in the word of the Lord is to us, and the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Israel hath sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I command them, for they have even taken of the accursed thing. And I've also stolen and dissembled also. And they have put it even among their own stuff, saints, it's in the church. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except ye destroy the accursed thing from among you. Up, sanctify the people, and say, sanctify yourself against tomorrow. For thus said the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee. O Israel, thou canst not stand before thine enemies until ye take away the accursed thing from among you. That's the word of the Lord to us today, taken from Joshua chapter 7, and in particular, verses 10 to 13. As I said, I want to deal with the subject today, praise God, uh, a call to action. A call to action. This is a word that is relevant today. It's for every hearer, and in particular, it's going to focus a lot on the leadership of the body of Christ. The people of God who have been called by God to lead his people. I want to focus on this so intensely that we know that with all that is going on around us now, we have never seen this in one season. We are fighting a pandemic, praise God, and at the same time, there is riots all over the world. This is shocking. This is unbelievable. This has brought intense pressure upon the body of Christ and the people of God. There are many who are asking the question, where is the voice of the church? What shall we do in this time and in this season? What is it that is really happening? What is it that is happening to the black race? And as I speak on this subject, 
amen, not forgetting, praise God, that we have friends who are of uh, the Caucasian background, white friends. But what I say to you today as I speak is that if you are not racist, if you are not of that evil mindset, what I'm speaking today should not offend you in any way, shape, or form. Because you are of a godly mindset, you are not one that is affected by what that, what's going around in, in a negative way. In other words, to say you are a part of what's going on. Praise God. We are talking to a culture that has developed, something that has been upon this uh, North America in particular, the West Indies, Africa, all over the world for the last 400 years. And it seems as if the voice of the church has been silenced. The church has not been speaking up and speaking out as we should. But I'm calling right now the church to action. I'm calling the people of God to action. Now, a genuine leader is not a searcher for consensus, but a molder of consensus, has been the word of Martin Luther King Jr. He said, though we may be tough, know that we shall overcome someday. We can't be all spiritual saints of God. The church has focused so much on its spirituality. It's a common saying that we're so heavenly minded that we are no earthly good. The church of Jesus Christ and those who are of the oneness faith in particular and of every faith for that matter, Praise God, we are so widely spread over all the cities of this world. There are more churches per square mile worldwide today, praise God, than any other institution. Yet, we're wondering, with the power and the anointing that the church carries, why aren't we seeing more changes? We, we, we can't be all spiritual. It is wonderful to call the church, as you've seen worldwide, it's happening. We've called the church to prayer and fasting and consecration. But we need to take action. And that's why I read from the book of Joshua. Joshua was faced as a leader with a similar problem. And Joshua, because of what he learned from Moses, rose up and praise God, he started to pray. He brought the elders together. He brought them in a place of prayer, fell before the Ark of the Covenant to seek the Lord. But the Lord spoke to him and said, Joshua, get up from prayer. Your people have sinned. They have taken up the accursed thing which I command you not to do, and it is even among you. It is in your stuff. Now, I want you to see how critical that is, because the church today has been so Americanized, westernized, that the church has been attacked by our very own people, wanting, like Israel, to be like the world. We've taken on the practice of the world. We've brought it in the church. Amen. The church is acting more like the world. We dress like the world. We go where the world go. We behave in every way. Praise God. We have people from the leadership team down to the, the youth department, the Sunday school. They are protesting hallelujah, vehemently, that the church doesn't need all that. You don't need to be so strict. We don't need to be dressing up like old people. They, they are rebelling. They're rebelling so much that the stench of our rebellion has now reached up to the nostrils of God. 
that God is becoming wrath, not only with the world, but with the silence of the church. Amen. Praying to God does not negate our responsibility to take action. I'm not telling you to stop praying. I'm not telling you to stop fasting. But church, we need to take action. Our voice need to be heard. Don't just tell me you're angry about what's going on. We need to unify the voice of the body of Christ. So we want to speak to every leader who is a solo leader, who is on your own. You're not connected. You may have fellowship, but you are a loner. You cannot be effective. You cannot, hallelujah, effect change. Because if change must be effected, you have to connect yourself with the mainstream of who is taking action. Now, we must pray, but God is speaking to us. Amen. And the question is, is God speaking to us? Over the last five, six years, I've been to various convocations and conventions and meetings and anniversaries. We've, we've heard from some of the most prolific speakers and, 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 and preachers and teachers. And I, I'm, I'm confident that God has been speaking to the church. But the church is so taken up in their program that they are ignoring what the Lord is saying. I know for sure. I've been out preaching and I've been warning the church that the church needs to take action. The church needs to be more forthright. It's okay to be in the pulpit and to be speaking so profoundly and your didactic is deep. You have the way away with words and, and praise God. You can divide the word. You're such great speakers. But I notice once you move from behind the pulpit, once you put the mic down, there is no action. There is nothing happening. While God has been speaking to us that now it's time for action. This is going now over 400 years. 401 years to be exact that we're seeing the oppression of our people and their, 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 their elements within the system of slavery. Hallelujah, that has uh, permeated or uh, itself into the church. It has creeped into the church that our leadership, rather than liberating God's people, we have taken on the same slavery mentality in the way we operate the church. But it's time for a breakthrough. It's time for action. We want to be, when you read through the book of Joshua and see how Joshua was able to conquer all the nations that came up against him. We need to see the same power being manifested within the body of Christ. The Lord said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses. Amen. But the Lord did also say to Mark and to the rest of the apostles, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Are the signs following the church? There are so many churches going into mega churches today. But what the problem is, though they may be a mega church, the effectiveness of a movement cannot be just instituted by a mega church. It takes the body of Christ globally to effect changes in this time and season. And especially within the black churches, whether in North America or globally, praise God, we need to be liberated. We need to be more forthright and, 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 and the word of God must flow from us with power. And we need to stand in places of authority because the power and the anointing of God is upon us. We need our Moses. We need our Daniel. We need our Sadrach. Meshach and Abednego. We need to see you in strategic places. Today, the church, 
among us as Jamaicans and, and now some of us are Canadians and Americans. We know that a hundred years ago when the church came to the island of Jamaica, praise God, we, we our, our, our parishioners and our, our saints were, were not well educated. That was, that was a time when, praise God, we've just been liberated from slavery. Not many things were going for us. But today, within the body of Christ, we have lawyers, doctors, judges, teachers, amen, name the profession. They are in the church today. Now, this is a call to action. I'm getting to the word that we may begin to harness the force that God has placed in the body of Christ and begin to take action. Oh, praise the name of for God. We need to begin to take action. Now, God's commission and command to the church has been clear, but for years we have been playing church. And it seemed as if God, it, it, yeah, yeah, that's how we feel, as if God has been turning a blind eye to our action. Amen. But there is always a time of reckoning and recompense. I think we're seeing it now. Let's look at the church. We are called to be the salt and light of the world. From a kingdom perspective, the church was not designed, and I will repeat this very often, the church was not designed to be a religious institution. The church, amen, was designed to be an educational institution. It was not until Matthew 16 that the Lord spoke of the church. He came preaching the kingdom of God. Therefore, we have misinterpreted the Bible and misinformed our constituency. For centuries, loved ones, brothers and sisters, amen, men have used the Bible and the gospel to proliferate the heinous crimes against humanity. Amen, the gospel has been misused and abused. There are many today, that's why not many can preach like Bishop W. and Tony Johnson. Amen. They cannot speak truth to its fullness because they have to get, quote unquote, another gig. Praise God, they need another assignment. I don't preach for assignment. When I go out, I believe as a servant of God, it's not about how much you can give me. It's about releasing the truth upon the, the congregation and the hearers thereof. So for centuries, men have used and abused the Bible and, and used the word of God for their own benefit. Uh, Paul said in Acts chapter 20 and verse 29, for I know this, that after my departing, shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Haven't we seen that? Grievous wolves. Amen. Uh, 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 he took it a little further in Acts chapter 20, verse 31. Amen. To, to 30 and 31, he said, also of your own selves, right within our churches. I want to take my time with this because I don't want you to feel that I'm, I'm, I'm so angry and out of control with what's happening. But the Bible said, also of your own self shall men rise, arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples from the church. I personally have experienced that that men have risen up right among you. And rather than propagating and supporting the ministry, they, they start to speak perverse things, praise God, to draw disciples after them. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn you every one, night and day with tears. We have been preaching this, but right in our own churches, just when we thought the people we have worked with, the people we have trained, the people we have taught, we are so divisive in our mind. We allow the demonic attack on our churches. 
that people who are, who are to undergird you and support you allow the devil to draw them away. I want you to notice that Achan was from the tribe of Judah. You know what Judah is. Judah is the lion's whelp. The Bible said, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from beneath his feet until Shiloh come. Judah is the tribe that Christ came through. The tribe of uh, David, the king, the great king, came because this was the leadership uh, 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 tribe of the Israelites. So God has used Judah to lead while Levi were in control of the priesthood. But Judah was the, was the royal uh, 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 line or the royal branch of the tribe of Israel. So now watch what's happening. The, 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 the accursed thing was taken, amen, by a leader. The accursed thing was taken by a Judahite, one who's supposed to know the principles of the church, understand the church, saw the accursed thing, and took off the accursed thing. The Lord spoke to his servant and says, many of yourselves shall arise, a uh, men shall arise. We got to break this out of the church. If the church is going to be powerful, our men, I know men are by design leaders and they can be aggressive. But men, though you are a leader, you got to understand how to operate and to manifest under leadership. I need to speak to our men. You need to know that though you are gifted and anointed, not everybody is called to be the leader of leaders. Judah, Achan rather, rose up from the tribe of Judah, rose up men from among you and took of the accursed thing and they have it in the church. Today I am appalled at what's happening in the church and I believe this is a wake-up call. If COVID is not enough, if the rioting is not enough, then what's going to bring the church to its alertness, to its awareness of the massive pandemic of sin oh, and disregards to the will of God that is coming within the church? Philippians 3 verse 19 said, Men have risen up among us whose end is destruction whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who mind earthly things. There are some folks among us, there are some preachers in our pulpit. Sorry, I gotta speak like this, because everybody's talking about the symptoms that we're seeing. They're not dealing with the cause. Joshua saw Israel losing a battle. Joshua was praying like he knew Moses would. But the Lord is saying, no, Joshua, you got to take this a little further. I know with the older church, I'm able to be at my age. Praise God, tomorrow I celebrate another birthday. I'm able to say at my age, I fall between the older generation and the younger generation. So I have a clear vision of what the older generation does and what the younger generation needs to do. So praise God, we know that we pray about things. We know that we fast about things. But the Lord said to Joshua, which was a younger generation, it's not time to be praying and fasting about all these things. Now is a time in Israel when you need to take action. Because men have risen up among us whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. So we have seen men who cares only about their carnal agenda and spear not to abuse the flock of Christ. Because then here is the danger, because of the innocence of the saints, because of the, the vulnerability of the saints giving themselves over to our leadership, 
believing in our ministry. There are men who capitalize on the weakness of the flock, on the weakness of the saints, and have abused their, uh, their, their power by, by, by molesting and abusing the saints. But God is calling us to reckon our action. We've got to change our way of doing things. I wish somebody in the house would praise God right now. We have men whose their own agenda, it's not about the building of the body of Christ, it's about establishing their own kingdom. They don't care about nobody in the church. They don't care about no other leader. They just have their agenda. And if you're not enslaved to their agenda, they care nothing about you. But I'm here to speak out against every leadership of that caliber. That, praise God, God didn't call us to that. God said, take care of the flock over which I made you overseer. He said we should not lord over God's heritage. But according to Ephesians 4, I feel like preaching, but I'm going to teach a little. According to Ephesians 4, praise God, he gave us the anointing. He gave us the power to equip the saints for ministry, not to hold you captive, but to release you with your anointing and make you accountable to a leadership that has structure, a leadership that has foundation. Because where there's no structure and where there's no foundation, we cannot ask for accountability. Because if I am not subject to any authority, then why should I ask you as the same to be subject to some authority? I have to, amen, bring to silence some leaders who believe they can be isolated loners in the kingdom, believing they don't need anybody over them to, 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 to be accountable to. Praise God. We know about the, the, the church, that every church, it stands on its own. Praise God. But we do understand that though God doesn't want us to build a, 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 that kind of government that, that, that limits the possibility of a particular church, but God wants you to be under a leadership conclave that can speak to you, remind you what is God's word to the church. So because the, 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 the men grow up in the church, even today you see women are getting into that. And that's another subject because never before in the history of the church do we see women are moving out from under the authority of the leadership to start churches. And I'm here to rebuke that because that's not God's design for the church. Oosh, I know I missed somebody. I just lost somebody online. But I am speaking that we need to bring our men back into action. You need to spread this message. And people are capitalizing on the church because they know the vulnerability of the saints. Amen. The gospel, my brothers and sisters, have been used to enslave vulnerable uh, rather than liberate the captives. The Lord said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, not to capitalize on your vulnerability. Ah, he has sent me to preach the gospel to the poor, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to heal the brokenhearted. I'm not here to become rich and famous off of you. And then what we have seen, what we have seeing in this day, amen, especially in our churches, we're being uh, led by diverse lusts and, and, and activities. When a preacher comes to your church and start to talk about uh, being prophetic, as if they, they're hearing from God every day and they're telling you they know the situation and the condition of our people and they speak things into your hearing in order to draw your attention. And we are so vulnerable that they've tickled our emotion at the expense of our intellect 
telling or slap your purse, amen, and telling you the reason you're going through what you're going through, it's because of your neighbor. And, and, and praise God, you must leave certain friendship and company when that's not what God sent us to do. God sent us to liberate people. God sent us to bring people out of their bondage, out of their witchcraft, out of their, their thievery, out of their prostitution, out of their drug dealing, bring people out of this. God didn't tell me to turn you against your neighbor and just to mess with your mind when you know you're nothing but a liar in the pulpit telling people thus said the Lord. We come to rebuke this. It's a call to action. And what has been happening, the good people are keeping silent. Hello, somebody. The good ones, the people who are supposed to be speaking up, you know that what is going on is right. You know that the behavior of some of these preachers are not right. Yet you're bringing them in our pulpits to preach to our constituency. Amen. To preach to the people who God said to take care of the flock over which I made you overseer. My God, the Lord is angry. We have seen people leave the church with bitterness in their heart because of the deception of the uncalled and unqualified leaders. But the greater danger is the silence of the true believers. It's time the true saints stand up and speak out. It's that we have been taught through our slavery masters that we must be silent and that we must not rebuke an elder. But notice the same chapter that says, rebuke not an elder. It says, them that sin, rebuke before all that others may fear. Our leaders are saying today, we can't, we can't do nothing. Let them be. Let the wheat and the tares grow together. But we can stop some of this wheat from growing. The Bible said the tears came among us when we fell asleep. Is the church sleeping? Somebody speak to me. Is the church sleeping? But that's where the devil sows tears among the wheat. So Martin Luther King had said, there comes a time when silence is betrayal. Are you with me now? I want to pause there. Martin Luther King says, there comes a time when silence is betrayal. Our lives begin to end. This is Martin Luther King's quote. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about the things that matter. I'm listening, church. We're calling the church to prayer. We're praying all over this world, but you need to rise up. I'm going to deal with that. Give me a moment. I'm going through this. Uh, uh, Martin Luther King continued to say, in the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. When you know people should stand with you and they remain silent and watch the enemy destroy the flock. Praise God. I've seen that. I've experienced that. So I'm speaking with experience. When people sit back, Know that the enemy is after the work you're doing and they remain silent. The church has been failing to fulfill its purpose because we want to be nice. Who shy? Hallelujah. Because we want to be nice. This is a call to action. No, the progressive failure is seen as we look at the book of Revelation. We see the progressive failure failure of the church. Amen. The church over the years have been falling. The first thing that happened in Ephesus, the Lord says, you have left your first love. My God, I want to talk about that. The first thing that happens within the church, the failure of the church, we have left our first love. The zeal, the courage, the, the support of the ministry. The Lord said, I've got something against you. You have left your first love. You have abandoned the love you have for Christ. 
to protect his kingdom. Then the Lord went down, praise God, to Smyrna and said, Smyrna, I know you remain uh, faithful amidst persecution, but Smyrna had allowed folks to come within the church, false people to come within the church and to be speaking certain things within the church. Ah, it, it, like the church in Smyrna, Christians are persecuted worldwide. We know that. But the Lord is saying it's time to speak up. Amen. The church in Pergamum compromises the belief. Today, I'm listening to leaders among us who have finally been uh, 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 condescended, who are finally, they're finally compromising the gospel. They don't want to speak truth because they are afraid of losing members. The people they are putting in leadership, they did not qualify them before we put them in leadership. Not because uh, my, it's my son, not because you've grown in the church, doesn't mean you're qualified to lead the church. Because the Bible speaks that the bishop must first learn to lead his own house first before he seeks to lead the church. Saints, don't watch my charisma. Watch my character. Because if my wife cannot replicate what the bride of Christ should look like, I'm not ready to pastor the church. We may not be able to control our children, but my bride and I should be a reflection of what the church should be. Could somebody praise God up in this room? So when you look at me, don't watch my charisma. Watch the life that I live outside of the pulpit. Watch my life. Amen. If I can't control my house, then who am I going to control? Now, the church in Thyatira, the church there allowed false prophets. And I should tell you, I'm in Revelation 2 and 3. The church in Thyatira, praise God, allowed false prophets. Thyatira was a wealthy commercial city and they had everything, but they were allowing. And one of the things we're allowing in the church today are lying false prophets prophets. We allow them to speak. We discern them, but I wish to God we get back to the day, my God, I feel my preach coming on, to the day when the, the watching, discerning mothers and men within the church would come to our pulpits and write on camera, take out some of those false lying preachers in our pulpit. Enough is enough. We're losing the power of the church because we're compromising like the church in Thyatira. I'm not going through all the teaching on Revelation today because this is a call to action. We have reached to a place that even some of us today, like this church in Sardis, though there is a few in Sardis whose garments are not spotted, but they are spiritually dead. Some of our churches are dead. Dead, dead. You are on a respirator. You are on a ventilator. You are dead. And you will not come down and humble yourself to get a resurrection. Rabba Shanda. Keto Shama. You need to be honest with yourself. But I know, I know, I know. Yes, as the Lord said, there's a few inside it. I feel the power of God coming upon me whose garments are not spotted because there are some of us who, who rather to just hold on to what we've got rather than to go among the packed out lives demonic churches who seem to be flourishing with all kind of garbage in our pulpit. Some of us like those saints in Sardis, though we're dead and we don't have the evangelists and the great preachers coming to us, but praise God, we rather stay in our small corner and stay there with the few of us, pray with each other, love each other, because we are not going to join with those false prophet and liars, those uncouth, untrained, uncultured preachers who cares nothing about the, the sanctity of the church, the holiness of the church. We're dressing how we want in the church. We're coming in the pulpit, praise 
praise God, so common in the pulpit of God, where the presence of God is. Who chateau, if God wasn't serious about how we approach him in the pulpit to minister to the people of God, God wouldn't have said to Moses, tell Aaron when you're going into the holy of holies, I shanda. Tell him not to go in your common clothes, but you got to go in your royal holy garment because the robes of the priest, praise God, is an indication of your holiness. Oh, how do we expect miracles in the house of God when the pulpit has become a place of entertainment rather than a place of ministry? We got to stop the concerts in our churches. There is a hall for that. Let's get another hall. But you cannot make the place of worship the place of entertainment. Uh, 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 Sardis, Sardis, there are few in you. You rather to stay where you are. You rather to stay with a few faithful people than go mess with them folks who are jumping all over the pulpit, have people falling out with their lying uh, prophetic utterances. But it's a time of reckoning. Let the true saints stand. You can't afford to be silent now, Bishop Johnson cannot afford to be silent now. I got to speak out against your atrocities that has weakened the anointing upon the church. Then we go to Philadelphia. Mm. Oh God, I feel your help. Ah, I know Philadelphia, you're patiently endured despite weakness. There's some among us, <laughs> we're tempted and we want to go like everybody goes. <laughs> we're drawn in our spirit because sometimes the people who are not living according to God's will seems to be in more prosperity than you who are faithful because you're so honest in your pursuit. You're not willing to do the ungodly stuff to survive, but there are those who are willing to do anything, amen, to survive. So somehow it seems as if they are prospering more than you. I'm not going to lie to you to get your money. I'm not going to lie to you to get your offering, but there are those who will turn the convocation, the holy convocation into a den of collectors and liars and thieves. Hallelujah. We've got to shut this down. That's why God uh, put a lockdown this year and lock down all our churches because we've turned the church, hallelujah, into a den of thieves. When you go in the pulpit talking about who is going to collect 10,000 and 5,000 and 6,000 when their souls in the street die. And it's not that you're, you're one of those who will go out and help people. The Lord is rebuking us today. The Lord is rebuking and shutting down our churches, showing us how powerless we are. Let the true saint stand up. Stand up. Let the true saint wave your hands in this room and say it's time for the truth. Philadelphia, despite your weakness, you have endured. You're going through it. Usha. Yes, you're going through it. Then there comes today. Here is our issue. We're dealing in the Laodicean period. They are lukewarm. They have a lot of outward uh, a manifestation, but there is no power. We are finding more actors in our church because they say they're rich, they have need of nothing. They have their lovely churches. They care about nobody. But the Lord said, you are poor church. You are wretched. You are blind. Their pastor's asking me, Bishop, aren't you going to open your church and do? I said, no, because I've not seen the miracle in any of our churches that would guarantee if I go to the church and get sick and I'm, it's on my deathbed, there is a pastor who can literally come and lay hands on me for a resurrection. Oh, Chateau Kendo Shama. We need to see the power of God because the Lord did command that these signs shall follow them that believe. We need to come out of silence. We need to just stop praying. I'm not saying we're going to stop praying, but we got to take action for prayer doesn't negate our responsibility to take 
action speak out against the atrocities and the meanness, hallelujah, the self-centered operation. When God has called us to be shepherds, we have become thieves within the church. Ooh, Shabbat. Bishop Johnson, cover yourself right now. Hey, where are my prior warriors in the house? Hallelujah. I need some prior warriors up, up in this with me because I know this is going to bring attack. This is a call to action. Uh, you know, let me back up a little just to, just to Revelation 2 verses 2 to 3 and verse 6. I want to read that for a reason. This will show you, amen, what has been happening within our churches. The Lord said to the church, amen, I, I know your works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them that are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles. You have tried them. You say you are called. So many apostles and prophets today, but the church needs to try them in the spirit. Rabba Shanda. Shama. The church need to try them falls a prophet and apostles and are not and has found them to be liars. Who gave you that collar? Who gave you that robe? Who gave you that fine clergy jacket? You are nothing but a liar. Let the true believers speak out. Uh, folks said I'm too aggressive when I speak like this. But it's time. It's time we speak out against the things that are hindering the power and the anointing of the church of Jesus Christ. You have tried them which say they're apostles and are not, and has found them liars. But you are born and as patient, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. We have seen it and we are upset with it, but we have patience and we are just holding on, hoping that God will send a deliverer. Well, your deliverance is in this loved one. It's time to speak up. But I notice he said in verse number six, but this thou hast, that thou atest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also ate. The Nicolaitans are a set of people. The word Nicolaitans mean destruction of the people. There are some systems, there are some principles which are been brought into the church that even some holy sanctified believers are breaking for it. They are falling for your 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 your, your lewdness. They are falling for your style. They begin to undress themselves within the church. They begin to look certain way in the church. My God, the holy woman who used to focus on the glory of God are now trying to outdress the young people because the church become a place of competition. The church become a place like a modeling contest. Hallelujah. Our brothers are walking in. They have become so efficient. Eminent. My God, we can't tell a true brother. My God, their pants is so tight it's squeezing me. My God, they're acting like sisters within the church. Our brothers are no longer standing as men. Even in our pulpits, we're allowing men wearing earrings and all kind of stuff within the church and our choirs having dreadlocks in our church and, and defeating the purpose of the church. Ah, oh, they are people destroyed because that's not the church. Let the true church stand up and speak out that it's time we stop. And if they're allowing it in their church, don't allow them in our church because they are destroying the value of the people within the church. This is a call to action. Mm. Love one, there comes a time when we cannot be nice. We cannot be silent and watch the demise of the kingdom of God. Praying doesn't negate our responsibility to take action. We must do according to the Lord's command. The Lord said to, to, to Joshua, why are you praying now? It's not time for a prior meeting. It's time to get up and call the people of God to accountability. The Lord said in Acts chapter 20, verse 28, Take heed therefore to yourselves. That's my command. 
preaching the gospel in season and out of season, reproving and rebuking with all long suffering and doctrine. Tell everybody, you got to listen to this. Take it therefore to yourselves and to the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you an overseer to feed the church of God, which Christ has purchased with his own blood. It's not your church. You don't even have the rights to name your church. That's why we stand up that the church is the church of Jesus Christ. Not the name that I thought I prayed about and God gave me a miraculous revelation that I must call the church by a name. No, it's not my church. I did not purchase the church with my blood. I'm just a shepherd. I'm just a servant. Praise God. So when we look at Joshua and Achan, Joshua saw the demise of his army as they flee from the men of Ai. And according to the narrative, the Bible says that Joshua rent his clothes, verse number six of chapter seven, and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until evening tide. It was an entire day of prayer. And, and he, he and the elders of Israel put dust upon their heads. God did not only expose the evil that was in Israel, he gave them the strategy. Ah, yes. So when, when Joshua rose up in, and Joshua began to lament before the Lord, Ushai. Joshua said, God, have you brought us to an open shame? Hallelujah. As we just read there, that Joshua put dust upon their heads and they fast. And Joshua said, Alas, God, <laughs> wherefore hast thou all brought this people over Jordan to deliver them into the hands of the Amorites, to destroy them? Listen to Joshua. Joshua who came back after he spied out the land. Joshua who came back and said, We're well able to take the land. Leaders who are true and are standing, keep standing. It caused Joshua, nobody else but Joshua to say, would to God we had dwelt on the other side of Jordan. Sometime when you're standing for the truth, people will make you doubt the revelation that God give you. People will make you doubt the power that God gives you because people will make it look like, praise God, it, it wasn't real. Here are we failing what we are supposed to be winning. There are folks who said to me, well, Bishop, if God had sent you, why don't you have a church building yet? Well, we're about to see that happen. Hallelujah. God's going to give us a breakthrough. I'm not running after those who have their building. I'm running after the will of God. Joshua said, wish to God. The, 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 the people made Joshua, hallelujah, to doubt that it was God who brought them over Jordan. Oh Lord, what shall I say when Israel turned their backs against their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ us around and cut off our name from the earth. And what will thou do unto thy great name? They're even implicating God. And the Lord said, who shut up? And the Lord said unto Joshua, get up. Get up, Joshua. You're praying enough. You are prayed enough. It's time to take action. You are too nice. You don't want to hurt nobody. You don't want nobody feelings to be hurt. You don't want to lose some people. But listen, Joshua, now is the time to get up off your face. We have prayed enough, saints. My God, I heard the prayer. I'm on some of these prayer line and I hear the travail of some of the saints. My God, they have prayed. They have fasted. They have lamented. Three days of prayer, seven days of fasting, eight days of fasting, 21 days of fasting. But the Lord said, you have fasted enough. You have prayed enough. It's time to go and deal with the atrocities. Some of us are afraid to speak because we have become party with those who are the robbers and the thieves. Yes, spread this to everybody. You are afraid to speak. Bishop, you are, oh, sorry, sorry. I don't want to talk down to the leaders because you're men in authority. But that, can I speak out and call you to, to uh, uh, accountability? That the reason why you can't speak out because you've become party of what's happening. Ushama, you have stood up and watched the destruction of the church 
uh, support people who are destroying other leaders, you have not opened your mouth to tell them they're wrong. You have not stepped out. You're still visiting their church, giving them offering, supporting their ministries, ordaining them, and you're not telling them they are wrong. And the Lord said, get up. Get up from off your face. Israel had sinned. Church, we have done it to such a point that the government cares nothing about us. They just shut us down. There's no power within the church to speak up. There's no voice. Because we, 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 we are so separated, we are, we are so uh, this, the mutilated that we have no voice, we have no power. Because we have, we have allowed over the years, when the Oneness Church came to Canada, I heard of it, they were so united. That's the time when I was just born. When you came to Canada, you were so united. But now, there are over 200 or more churches within my area, and we are not affecting, we're not affecting a change within the city of Toronto or the greater Toronto area. And all over the world we see it, in Jamaica, in, 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 in America, right in some little cities, there are so many churches, but nothing is changing. It's just a little club we have. We all have our own club, we all have our own society, but no change is coming to the church to the body of Christ, it's time to take action. The Lord said, get up off your faith. The reason why the church now has no voice, the church is in sin. They have transgressed my covenant, which I command them, for they have even taken up their cursed thing, and listen carefully, and have also stolen and dissembled also, and they have put it even among us. We have brought the world in the church. The things that God said should not be in our church, we are allowing it in our church. The people we are bringing on our pulpits are not faithful to the truth. And we're not speaking up. Where are our senior leaders? Why aren't we hearing your voice? Hallelujah. Why aren't we stepping on this and speaking in love? Hallelujah. To our young ministers, our young brothers who are bringing a reproach on the ministry. They are not standing up to build the ministry. Hallelujah. They, they think it's a get rich quick scheme. No. To be where we are with the truth, we have to make tremendous sacrifices. But we have allowed their cursed thing. Our music has changed. Our preaching style has changed. Hallelujah. The mannerism of our young people have changed. Hallelujah, you think when you come in church, it's a modeling contest. Not to mention when we have a social event, you don't know that it's a church event. Our saints are so worldly. They dress so ungodly. You don't even know. And we sit there, we aren't saying anything. We are quicker to go behind the back of that leader and criticize him. But I'm here to say to you, holiness without which no man shall see God. I'm coming true to you here. So we have allowed the accursed stuff to be in our church, the ungodly attitude, the ungodly behavior, adultery is prevalent in our church. I'm not beating up on you because you your, your marriage didn't work. I'm not beating up on you because you get a divorce. But don't you know that the devil knows that a, a, a person who has been divorced and remarried is in adultery? We are afraid to speak against it. We're afraid because we don't want to hurt nobody. We want to be nice. But 
but we are trying to call our young people to accountability, not to enter into marriage until you know you're ready for it. And a matter of fact, if you stay holy, you don't have to wait long to get into marriage. If your ideals and your your, your paradigm is, is a godly paradigm, you can keep a marriage together when you stay in the will and the purpose of God. But we are allowing it. We are in endorsing the ungodly behavior, especially among our leaders. And what's causing the congregation to fail is when they see these men come in our church and we endorse them, they believe it's okay. So our marriage is within the church. The church's divorce rate is getting greater than the world. Where, where we are supposed to be the light of the world, our, our rate is higher. We're allowing ungodly attitude and behavior, and that's destroying our sons. That's destroying our daughters. That's destroying the next generation, because whatever one generation allows, the next generation, amen, they, they, they perfect it. They bring it to another level. They have allowed the accursed stuff. I'm calling our churches to action that when our doors are open, we need to go back to our churches and remove the accursed stuff. Trudeau can't do it for you. Hallelujah. Trump can't do it for you. Even some of our constituents are backing the Trumps and the Trudeaus. We ain't backing none of those. We're backing the church of Jesus Christ. We want to let people know that it's the church that can change the world. It's not a Trump. It's not a Trudeau. It's not a Johnson in the, in the European region. It takes Jesus Christ to change the world. Read 2 Chronicles 7, 13, and 14. So church, when we get back to action, we got to move the accursed thing from among us. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies but turn their back before their enemies because they are a cur they were a curse. Neither will I be able, uh, neither will I be with you anymore. Listen, a lot of our churches, they're just performing. Because like the Lord said here to Joshua, I will be with you, neither will I be with you anymore except you destroy their curse thing among you. The Lord speaks it clearly. I will not be with you until you destroy, except you destroy. Church, we need to destroy the accursed thing from among us for God to move in our churches again. The Lord said to Joshua, here we go, up, sanctify the people say and say sanctify yourselves against tomorrow for thus said the lord god of israel there is an accursed thing amen in the midst of the old israel thou cannot stand before thy enemy's church we cannot stand before the world we cannot convince our 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 government leaders because there is an accursed thing in our midst until we take away the accursed thing, the spirit of division, there is a demonic force over the GTA, praise God, and over the over Christendom as a whole. That division has become a thing. Everybody now is getting revelation to become pastors. Where are the evangelists? Where are the, the praise God, amen, those who undergird ministry? Where are our deacons in the church? Everybody has suddenly become a pastor, then not only have they become pastors, they start to adorn themselves as apostles and prophets, but the devil is a liar. Ch church, cover me. I'm going in deep here. Praise God. I'm going in deep here. Where are my, hallelujah, secret service agent? Cover me under the blood with your prayer, because my God Almighty, we will not have the preeminence over the earth and the sinful action of the people of this world until the accursed thing is out of our church. Oh, Shama, 
Raba Shato Kendo Shaba. We have got to bind the strong man. Raba Shete. Robo Shanda. I'm, I'm rebuking the strong man out of your house. I'm rebuking the strong man from within your tent. Manda Katosha. Ah, the Lord said, we got to get rid. Let me go down before I miss this. In the morning, therefore, you shall draw, you, you, you shall be brought according to tribes. And it shall be denomination to denomination. We don't have tribes now. Denomination to denomination. Hallelujah. All who said, whatever your denominational name is, God said, you're coming before me. I'm doing something now. Tribe by tribe. The Lord's going to take it tribe by tribe, family, uh, congregation by congregation, a pastor by pastor is coming up before the Lord. Mm. And man by man, this is the pastor by pastor. Listen what's going to happen. Atashaba Kiba Sheto. God's going to take it denomination by denomination, bishop by bishop, overseer by overseer, pastor by pastor. When God comes down to you, lying pastors, you deceitful ministers of the gospel. God, I know, I know, I know, this is not your kind of preaching, but I'm coming up right up in your town. Hallelujah. When we find it, the Lord said, and it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing. Today, we don't even have to search the churches because the accursed thing is very visible. Oh, Shama. Hallelujah. It shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burned with the fire and, and he and all that he hath because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord and because he had brought folly in Israel. Then the Bible said Joshua rose up and Joshua went and searched house to house. Amen. And the Bible said Judah, one of the, one of the denominations was taken. It was the denomination that should have been the leader in the, in, in the ministry of the kingdom. And the Lord said he took the family of the Zarhites and he brought the family of the Zarhites man by man. And Zabdi was taken. I feel like preaching, but I'm not getting back to this. And Zabdi was taken. And he brought his household man by man. And Achan was taken. And the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah was taken. Why did the Lord allow Joshua to write? What's the, 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 the background of this man? Because I want you to know this man came from the truth. This man knew the truth. This man came from the tribe of Judah. He's no stranger. He knows the principles of the church. He knows the laws of God, but he chooses to step out of the will of God to establish his own righteousness. And the Bible said Achan was taken and the Lord did not only destroy Achan. You can read the rest of it. The Lord destroyed everything that pertained to him because the Lord said, no, I cannot allow Achan. We got to rebuke these spirits. Come on now, church, from among the church. We got to rebuke these spirits. I know I'm over my time, but this is Friday evening. Hallelujah. We've got the leaders, leaders, the next move, the action that God is calling us to. I don't know if we can wait until this pandemic is over, but we got to gather the church together. We've got to come up with strategies. Here is my take. We don't have to destroy nobody now. Amen. We're going to let God do his work, but this is what we're going to do. We want to gather as leaders. We got to be able to speak to every pastors and potential pastors and let them know the truth of God. Some of our pastors got to close those doors humble themselves, get back with the body of Christ, and let's begin ministry because we're bringing a reproach on the body of Christ. The people outside of the church are condemning us because of our action. I'm very passionate about this. So some that we've put in leadership needs to be brought back to humble themselves and learn to be submissive. I'm inviting you back to home. And then, amen, we've got to bring our leaders together. I need to see our leaders come together. I don't know how I'm going to start it, but something has got to happen.
Then when we bring our leaders together, I'm going to give you these seven steps and I'm going to be over. Then after we bring our leaders together, we have to define the problem or the problems. We've got to let uh, come together and we've got to define, we've got to deal with what the problem is, why the church doesn't have the power that it is supposed to. We've got to define the party politics, how we can allow men to rise up in the church, to break a ministry, to destroy a congregation because of their displeasure. We have to divide, define the problem. That's the number one action we must take. Praise God, because united we stand, divided we fall. The church is weakened based on the spirit of division. Don't try to tell me any other thing. So we got to re-educate our constituents, our leaders, that we will no longer tolerate the spirit of division and supporting men and women who are breaking up the body of Christ to do their own thing. Define the problem. Collect and analyze the data. Let's look at it categorically. Why did this happen? How did this happen? After we have defined it, collect and analyze the data. How many churches are here in this area? Why is it there? Is it of God? Is it not of God? We've got to define the problem, collect and analyze the data. Then we've got to clarify and prioritize the problem that we're going to deal with. We've got to know what's the main problem. There are various problems that we could define today. We could look at the old, old, old picture of what's happening. We could put different problems into different categories. But first of all, we've got to define the main problem. Look at the data. What has been happened? How many churches have formed over the last few years? How did they come to existence? Uh, and then we got to prioritize which problem. I think more than anything else, we need to uh, work and stop the spirit of division. Praise God, re-educate our pastors so that they can be much stronger leaders in the body of Christ. Then we've got to write a goal statement of each solution. What do we want to accomplish? How are we gonna overcome this problem? Because there are some that are stubborn, they're willful. We've got to write a goal statement of each problem. Because if we don't do that, we don't know if we're accomplishing what we set out to do. Then after we do that, brethren, after we do that, leaders, we've got to implement a solution. We've got to bring up an action plan. Then we've got to monitor. Some of you who are out there, you need to come home, come home to ministry. You have a greater work to do. You're going to help in the in gathering of God's people because what God wants to do in this time is to gather his people together. God wants to bring the body of Christ together. It's not just an awakening for the rapture. There will be a revival of the church before the rapture. God wants to gather his people together into one body. That's the mandate of the church today. It's not about your fine edifice. It's not about the amount of followers. It's bringing the people of God together. So we've got to implement solutions, set out an action plan, monitor and evaluate our progress. We don't know how long before the Lord will come. But one thing we know, we've got to keep working until he comes. Then we've got to go over it. Every year, every time we have a general conference, we got to reevaluate. Have we accomplished what we set out to do? Don't be lost in your growth. Don't be lost in your numbers. Like the Lord tell David, don't number the people because some of us get lost in the numbers. When we see the growth of our church, we forget our purpose. We forget what we set out to do. It's a common thing among us. 
But what we're doing now is to evaluate the problem. And when God begins to bless the church, we don't get caught up with, with, the, with the numbers, with the finances. We, we continue to monitor and evaluate. We want to make every person in the church Praise God, be accepted and know that they have value. I cannot afford to lose that deacon. I cannot afford to lose that elder. I cannot afford to lose that minister. You are valuable. And anytime as a bishop, as a pastor, as a leader, you see someone as not being valuable, you're not ready for the kingdom of God. You're not ready to nurse a congregation. I want you to know the reason why we're calling you home, dear pastors, the reason why we're calling you back home, deacon and elder, now pastor, you need to come back home, support your leader who God has called you to, to support, to undergird. Your work is not yet finished. This is a call to action. You won't be disgraced. You won't be looked down on because the work that you shall do after this is greater than you have ever done. It's not about the title. God said to Abram, I will make your name great, not your title. So if, if you no longer call me Bishop Johnson, that's not an issue. I'm your neighborhood pastor. Or I'm your neighbor. I'm your humble servant, double O Anthony Johnson. You don't have to put a title on it as long as the work is being accomplished. So we want to speak into the mind of every leader. I want you to analyze, define the situation that you're in. Collect and analyze everything that has happened and what leads to where you are now. God's kingdom cannot be treated as a democracy or as a laser fear system. Amen. So we've got to clarify and prioritize the problems. Deal with them. We've got to nurse some pastors who are out there. They're hurt. They're wounded. They, they're bruised and they, 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 they don't even know what to do. But they're determined not to go back home because of what we did to them. I've known of pastors who died because of how they were hurt. They have a heart attack. They didn't survive it. You know who you have done that. We know who we have hurt. Many ministers we have hurt. So that the power of God is no longer flowing in the church. People are not getting healed and delivered. People are not getting a breakthrough anymore because the power is not in the church. The body has been mutilated. Let me say this and I close because it's a call to action. I, I know for sure there was a time when God you would allow our ministry to travel worldwide to deliver people. But there comes a time when the enemy steps in to make the members of the party believe they can be great by themselves. Today I'm standing and I'm watching. They cannot do what we always do because the power is not there. You're not under your leadership. You're not under your calling. So there is a lot of pastors and ministers that are experiencing that. You think you could do what you used to do when you were under a certain ministry, but you may huff and puff, but you can't blow the house down. You need to get back home to where God has called you. And all that you've robbed and dismantled and have taken the accursed thing and you got it with you, God says it's time to come back home. May I beseech you now, it's a call to action that the power may come back to the church because God said to, to, to Joshua, I will no longer be with you as long as the accursed thing. You have them on the prayer line. I hear them on our prayer lines. I hear people who should not be praying on our prayer lines. They're out there on your Zoom conference. I've seen them. I've heard them. You need to 
define the problem. You need to know who people are. If we're going to get the breakthrough, they are killing your service. They're killing the power in your church because you have Akins on your Zoom line, on your Ring Central line, in your pulpit, and it's destroying your congregation, but you are, you're asleep. You're asleep. You're not ready to deal with it. But I'm calling the body of Christ to action. I'm calling you to action today. We've got to get ourselves back together. Destroy the spirit of division, the spirit of rebellion, the spirit of, of, of splitting churches every day. And they're telling you God told them to. Stop lying on God. You know it's not God. It's a spirit that spoke to you, but it's not of God. So today... We're calling the body of Christ to action. As I made quote earlier from what Martin Luther King says, praise God, in his writing, there comes a time when silence is betrayal. You know what happened. It's not time to be silent. Martin Luther King said it right. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about the things that matters. And furthermore, he said, in the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. If you remain silent in this time of renewal, in this moment that God is calling the body of Christ to reconcile themselves, if you remain silent, you're betraying the kingdom of God. You, it's not It's not the bishop you're betraying. It's not the pastors. The Lord tells Samuel, it's not you, Samuel. It's me. You may think you're hurting bishop. You may think you're hurting pastor so-and-so, but no, you're not. You're betraying Jesus Christ himself. Can I call you to accountability? Are you ready to humble yourselves and go back home? Are you ready to confess that the cursed thing is with you? Are you ready to make the change within your life that our voices can be heard? Because Joshua said, Lord, we will not be able to stand before the people. The Canaanites, which is a type of the world, will say that their God is not with them. That's why the government was able to shut our churches. You're asking and you're saying we shouldn't be shut. We got no power. There was a time when the 10 tribes came from Canaan, viewed the promised land and said to Moses, when Joshua and Caleb said, let's go up, uh, the Moses had to say, no, we can't go. The Lord is not with us. We can't confront the government. We can't confront the system because the Lord is not with us. Church, it's a very sad thing for a man of God to say to you today, but among many of us, the Lord is not with us. We're only acting out what we already know. But you do know within yourself, there is no power. There is no anointing. You need to humble yourself and let's come home. God is depending on us. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for an anointing upon that pastor. You're struggling with this decision. That bishop, that so-called apostle, that so-called prophet, Lord God, they're struggling with the decision because this word will be heard. Lord God, we're calling people to accountability. We're calling them to reconcile. We have to gather God's people. The mandate upon our lives is to gather God's people together because the Lord is saying they're weak, they're hungry, they're thirsty, and they need to be fed. It's not a famine of food and water. But even though, God, we're hearing so many prolific preachers, people are still hunger for you, Lord, because the ones that are feeding them are feeding them fast food, food without nutrients, without the, the, the value that we need. Lord, I pray today that you may release an anointing, humble us as leaders. Lord God, let us be subjected to the will of God and no longer be silent, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Lord, we're ready. 
We're saying yes to you, Lord. Ushata. We're saying yes to you, Lord. Is there somebody online? Is there a pastor online? Is there a bishop online who is ready to say yes to your will? Yes to your way. Lord, yes. I have done, I've taken the accursed thing. I was not supposed to be this pastor. I was not supposed to be the head of this ministry. I was not supposed to do what I did to somebody that I did it to. Lord, I humble myself because your coming is near and I want to make it in. Are you willing to do that? Share this video with as many leaders and pastors that you know. Tell them to watch the entire clip. I'm passionate about this. I'm speaking out because now is the time to get rid of the accursed thing that is among us. God bless you, Facebook friends and family. May you be blessed as when you come off this line, if you have not yet shared, let everybody know that the Lord is calling the church to action. God bless you. Have a good and godly weekend. And don't be afraid. Celebrate with me this week. God willing, I wake up tomorrow. I'll be celebrating another year. God has been good to me. I love and appreciate you, brethren. You're everything and more to me. And I know that God is about to bless you in a very special way. In Jesus Christ's precious name. Everyone